Let's please turn our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through to 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father knowing beloved brethren your elections of God for our gospel did not come to you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were amongst you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy and of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith towards God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivered us from the wrath to come. Amen. We've looked at this before, but with the permission of Martin, um, I had to go back to, to chapter one. I was meant to be doing, we meant to be doing chapter four today. Amen. Let's have a close look at uh, verse two. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. Whenever Paul prayed, he mentioned the Thessalonians. I have a question for me and you today. Are we as faithful as Paul was in remembering? Are we as faithful in remembering our Christian brothers and sisters when we pray? a challenge we can do better. Let us always remember to pray for our mentors. Let's pray for our elders. And let's pray for our leaders. What is the key verse of First Thessalonians chapter 1? What is the key verse? What is the key verse? Can I have an answer from anybody? What is the key verse? Or what do you think is the key verse? Of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Sorry? The 7. Thank you. God bless you. Another one? Thank you. God bless you. Verse 10. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Verse 2. God bless you. Well, I'm going to use all the verses you mentioned, but my key verse is verse 7. So that you may become examples of all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. So that you may become examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. What do we know about the city of uh, Thessalonica? 
I want to give us a brief history, very, very brief, to give us an understanding so that we can relate to those who lived there at the time. Thessalonica was a prominent seaport, and it was the capital city of the Roman province of Macedonia. Today, the city is known as Thalonica. It is, of course, in Greece. It was located on the main road from Rome to the east. Cassander, a German general, made this small town into a large city around 315 BC. And he renamed it after his wife, who was a half-sister of Alexander the Great. It became a commercial success. And um, during Paul's time, the population of Thessalonica was about over 200,000 people, predominantly Gentiles. I'll be surprised if there's any Jew here amongst us. You're welcome and I thank you. But we are all Gentiles. I am a Gentile. So we can relate with these people. When I was young, I always thought these places like Ephesus, I thought they were all in heaven. It's good to know that they are all here on earth. We can relate to these people. These were real, these were real people. Amen? What do you think is the key word of First Thessalonians? The key word. The key word of First Thessalonians. Any help from somebody? The key word of First Thessalonians. Definitely must come from the key verse. Amen. The key word is example. This church had become an example to all the other churches in the region. In lifestyle, evangelism, learning, and growth in Christ. My prayer today is that Christ's church will not just become an example in Luton, but also in Bedfordshire and the United Kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. What aspects of the Thessalonian experience were worthy of emulation? Why were they more models to all the other churches? What made them outstanding? I want us to know this so that we can emulate it and take it to the rest of the United Kingdom. Let's turn our Bibles to First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. If you're there, say amen. We give thanks to God always for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering, without ceasing, your work of faith. Your work of faith. Work of faith talks about conversion to God. Turning to God. So the first one is work of faith. The second one is labor of love. Labor of love talks about service to God. We are saved to serve. And the third one is patience of hope. Those were the three aspects of the Thessalonian experience that was worthy of emulation. Let's just deal with each and every one of them. Their work of faith refers primarily to their conversion to God, their turning to God. Before you can do anything for God, 
you first or must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God will not use anybody who's not, who's not been through death, burial, and resurrection. That's what baptism signifies to us. The work of faith refers primarily to our conversion to God. The description of faith as a work reminds us of the time some people asked Jesus, what shall we do that we may work? The work of God. During my studies, I was inquisitive. What is the work of God? What shall we do that we may work the works of God? What is the work of God? Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 28 through to 29. John chapter 6, 28 through to 29. And they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? He said to Jesus, what shall we do that we may work the work of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you may believe in him whom he sent. This is the work of God. He wasn't talking about toiling. Just believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. But again, what does it mean to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? Can anyone tell me? What does it mean to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? What does it mean to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? The best answer is definitely the Bible. Acts 16 Verses 30 and 31. Acts chapter 16. Verses 30 and 31. What does it mean to believe in, the, in our Lord Jesus Christ? This is talking about the jailer at uh, Philippi. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is literally talking about salvation. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So when the Bible talks of the work of faith, basically it's referring to Conversion to God. Salvation. It takes faith for us to even receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. In this sense, faith is an art. Faith is, a, is, is an act or a deed. But it is not a tool by which man ends merit. Or in which we can boast. It's not something we can boast about. It's a gift. It's by his grace. In fact, it is the only work that man can perform without robbing Christ of his glory as Savior and without denying his own status as helpless sinner. The work of faith, it is the only work that man can do without robbing Christ of his glory. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 2 to 10. The Bible says, for by grace we have been saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared that we, we should work in there. 
it's by grace that we are, we are saved. The expression work of faith also includes the life of faith, which follows conversion. It's not just about a saving faith. It also talks about the life of faith, which follows convention, conversion. The Bible says clearly, clearly in uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. There are about three types of faith in the Bible. The saving faith. Romans 10, 17 talks about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The measure of faith, mentioned in Romans 12, verse 3, we are, we've all been given a measure of faith. Once we become Christians, we are given a measure of faith, a most active faith. And the third one is the gift of faith, faith mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. But we won't be talking about faith because we'll leave that for another day. In addition to their work of faith, Paul remembered their labor of love. I said earlier, we are saved to serve. This speaks of their service for God, motivated by love to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christianity is not a lie to be endured for duty's sake. And I repeat, Christianity is not a life to be endured for duty's sake. But a person to be served for love's sake. But a person to be served for love's sake. When you become a slave to Jesus, that's when you get your freedom. Out of love for him, not out of duty. Christianity is a relationship. It's not a set of rules. It is a relationship. Born out of love for our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Thessalonians were living testimonies of this fact. And my prayer is, in that, is that that will also be embedded in Christ's church. Amen? Finally, Paul was thankful for their patience of hope. We talked about work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope. Patience is not just the ability to wait, but to maintain a good attitude while waiting. Patience is not just the ability to wait, but to maintain a good attitude while waiting. The patience of hope, this speaks of their steadfast waiting for Jesus. At the time, they believed that Jesus was going to come. Some of them gave up job, their jobs in order to wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. They have been, under, they, they've been undergoing persecution as a result of their stand. For God. But there were no cracks that appeared. My prayer is that no matter what we go through, there will be no cracks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's turn our attentions to first Thessalonians. Thessalonians chapter one. Verse 9 and 10. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. And I'll read. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had and how you turn to God from idols, to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. 
Amen. At the time, it was a matter of common conversation that when Paul and his colleagues went to Thessalonica, they received a royal welcome. We got that from verse 9. Also, it had become a matter of common knowledge that a startling transformation had taken place in the lives of the people of Thessalonica. They had turned to God from idols. Notice, they had turned to God from idols. This is a revelation I want everyone to catch. They did not turn from idols to God. They turned to God from idols. But Brother Lou, what is the difference? I can identify with this as an African. My forefathers were idol worshippers. When they received the word, they grabbed it. And they were so satisfied that they had to drop their idols. I used to love nightclub a lot. I never stopped going to nightclub because I felt like it in order to go to God. No. When I found God, it was so satisfying. It was so, so pleasing that I decided to drop my past life to God. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 4, that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. I don't know if there's anybody here, I think I am, who is struggling with some addiction or anything of that sort. Don't toil over it. The more of Jesus you, 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 you take into your life, the more of him you behold, the more you, be, you will be able to drop this addiction. Just more of him. The Bible tells us that Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Jesus is our victory. Jesus is our success. He's everything that me and you will ever want. The Bible says, I will receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Grace is a person. It's not a word. It's not a topic. Grace is Christ. The more of him we receive, the more we will be able to deal with areas that we are struggling in our life. Let us never lose the sense of thrill and awe that is implicit in this account of First Thessalonians. Two men go into a Gentile city with the word of God. They preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit. The miracle of regeneration takes place. Men and women became so enraptured with the Savior that they abandoned their idols. Next, you have a local assembly of believers praising God, living lives of holiness, bravery, bravely enduring persecution and winning others to Christ. This was exactly what happened in the city of Thessalonica. Truly, truly I say, the Lord's service is a prince of all calling. I can testify to that. There is nothing as good as serving God. Like David said, as the deer panted for the water, so does my soul long after you. Let that be our desire, each and every one of us. Not only were the Thessalonians serving the living and the true God, in contrast to idols which were lifeless and false, but they were waiting for the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. I, I just love it. How the pen of the Holy Ghost labored in describing the details of the expectation. 
Let's look at verse 10, please. Who are we waiting for? The Bible says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. I just love the emphasis. His son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivered us, who delivers us from the wrath to come. I came up with something called the five P's. The person, his son. The place, from heaven. The pledge, who he raised from the dead. The precious name, even Jesus. The prospect, who delivers us from the wrath. I say it again. The person, his son, the place from heaven, the pledge whom he raised from the dead, the precious name, even Jesus, and the prospect who delivers us from the wrath to come. We have, in verses 9 and 10, the three aspects of the Thessalonian experience. Turning, serving, and waiting. Turning talks about work of faith. Serving talks about labor of love, verse 3. And waiting talks about patience of hope. Those were the three aspects of the Thessalonian experience. And my prayer is that that will become our experience as well. When we, we are saved to serve. Amen? We may not have that wish to live on. But I want to admonish you here today. Have something to live for. You may not have that wish to live on, but have something to live for. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is something that can motivate us, give us hope for the future, irrespective of how difficult things are today. Let us have hope. We are Christians. Amen? Titus chapter 2, verse 13, talks about Looking for the blessed hope, the blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of our Lord, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us have hope, like I said before, which I will define as a favorable and constant expectation of good. That's what hope in Christ is all about. It's not a negative time, type of hope. We say, I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about confident and favorable expectation of good. As we wait for our Lord Jesus Christ, I just want to admonish you today, brothers and sisters, let's have that favorable and constant expectation of good. Irrespective of how things of how 